For about 25 years, I've been working with community-based cohorts of older adults that live around Columbia University Irving Medical Center. This is a really diverse neighborhood, really interesting neighborhood, and an ethnic enclave for Caribbean, Hispanics, or Latinx people. There's also a long history of people who are African American, and then uh, there's a group of people who describe themselves as non-Hispanic and white. African Americans and Hispanics are one and a half to two times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease and dementia, and yet they uh, represent no more than 2% of uh, participants in Alzheimer's disease clinical trials. Progress in Alzheimer's disease research, it won't be as relevant and it won't be useful unless it is able to include people who are representative of older adults in the United States. And it also won't be as useful if there's not good representation of the communities that are bearing a greater burden of cognitive impairment and dementia. We have to address these inclusion issues much more substantively with community partnerships, with long-term investment in the communities and additional resources into training and representation among the workforce. To me, that's the most hopeful part of the NAPA-related increase in research funding, is that more researchers who are thinking differently about how to do Alzheimer's disease research, who to include, who to partner with, they're given time and resources to for those partnerships that ultimately, I think, will lead to increased inclusion of people and communities that are experiencing disparities in Alzheimer's disease research. For over 25 years, there have been resource centers for minority aging research. I was able to obtain one of these uh, Alzheimer's disease resource centers for minority aging research at Columbia University. And what it does is provide pilot funds for researchers who come from minoritized backgrounds to do Alzheimer's one-year pilot projects focused on, in our case, Alzheimer's disease disparities. We've funded about 20 early career researchers to do this work, and it has also, I think, effectively launched uh, enduring careers in Alzheimer's disease disparities research. I'm so hopeful that these new voices, that these voices from people coming from very diverse backgrounds will only improve um, the quality and the uh, relevance and the utility of the, the Alzheimer's disease research that we do.